there needs to be like a through line or a thread that ties everything together because if someone's going to subscribe to a YouTube channel or to a podcast or watch a television show or a radio show or it's a magazine, it doesn't really matter. If someone's going to consume content, we do that because it's valuable for us in some way. Hey, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with Tim Schmoyer from Video Creators. Hello, how are you? Hey, pretty good. How are you? Good. Um, good. Guys, I have a confession. We did this once before, and Tim was like very insistent on checking the video <laughs> and make sure it worked when I was on his channel. And I did that when I recorded with him. And then I got an email that said, um, there's like 120 bajillion files here and they're all one second long and Tim's audio is not on any of them. So mm. this is like a redo of our original. It's thing. happened to all of us. Yeah. No big deal. I was so to irritated. talk about it again and we'll make it better this time because we worked out all the kinks from the last time. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I won't be so distracted thinking like something's not working right. Cause I could tell I should have <laughs> stopped it, but I didn't. So anyway, it's okay. Here we go. Yes. Yeah, so really quick before we get into what we're going to talk about today, let everybody on my channel who doesn't know you, which I doubt is hardly anybody, know who you are and what your channel is all about. Yeah. So my name is Tim Schmoyer. Good to see you guys. And uh, my channel, Video Creators, I help train YouTube creators, learn how to grow their audience on YouTube, how to get more views, more subscribers, turn it into a sustainable business for the purpose of reaching people and changing their lives with a message that can really make the world a better place for all of us. So that's like my mission. I've been doing it for five years full time. And before that worked for other companies and organizations where I did it for their clients. And then my job ended, they limited that department. And I'm like, all right, well, now I'm going to go do it for myself and teaching other people how to do it. And it worked. And here we are. So it's been awesome. I love it. So Tim and I met in person when I attended his Video Labs Live event, the first one ever um, yeah. in Cincinnati at the end of September. And one of the biggest things that stuck with me, because I've heard it I've heard it a thousand times, right? But never really thought about it in relation to my YouTube channel because I always kept mm -hmm. them so different, my business and my YouTube channel, okay. um, was the value proposition behind like your brand in general. And you just said it, yeah. like when you were introducing yourself, like why you do the thing you do. So yeah. I'd love for you to talk a little bit about what value proposition means and how we mm -hmm. can apply it to our channels to make our content just better, I guess. Yeah. You know, the mistake a lot of creators make is that they're like, you know what? Um, I just want to make videos that get a ton of views that earn a lot of subscribers that make a lot of money that establishes me as a thought leader that generates buzz in my industry. Like they have like all these goals. I'm like, you're going to try to do all that <laughs> with like a couple of videos, you know, like yeah. maybe you could accomplish each goal with different kinds of videos, but um, I've, there needs to be like a through line or a thread that ties everything together because if someone's going to subscribe to a YouTube channel or to a podcast or watch a television show or a radio show or it's a, a magazine, it doesn't really matter. If someone's going to consume content, we do that because it's valuable for us in some way. Mm -hmm. And with all the noise that's out there now, like people aren't going to do their homework to find out like, hmm is all up in your lady business something that's worth listening to or not? Like they're going to give you maybe a few seconds when they discover, but it's got to hook their attention really fast so that they're like, yes, Jessica Sansbury, I need more of that, right? So one of the best ways to do that, to quickly hook someone's attention is to, uh, and to tie all your episodes, your content, your video strategy, your podcast strategy, your blog strategy, whatever it is all together, is to have a value proposition, mm -hmm. which is – Basically, just what's the value you propose to deliver to your target audience through your content? Yeah. And you need to be able to communicate that pretty quickly, pretty concisely in an enticing type of way so that when people who are in your target audience hear it, they're like, yes, and they don't have to do a whole lot of homework to figure out what you're all about. Yeah. So One of the things, and I think you got it from the um, primal, primal Branding book, I think it was when you were talking about that, was that people identify with 
other people who share the same values, right? Mm -hmm. So um, is that one of the things we, I mean, I know it is for you because I know you and your brand, but is that one of the things we really need to bring in to our value proposition is outside values and like bringing all of that together? Yeah, shared beliefs um, are what the strongest communities, online and offline, they revolve around shared beliefs, Mm -hmm. not just common interests. And I think the reason for that is, is if we just have a common interest, you know, we have something to talk about. But if we discover that we believe the same thing about something, now like emotions are involved. Now it's like a deeper type of connection. And yeah, so in the Primal Branding book, uh, excellent book, but if you guys haven't read it or listened to it, any, I highly recommend it. When I work with clients long term, that's like one of the first things we do. They read that book and we would talk through how do you implement this code, Primal Code, into your brand so that's easy for someone to know you, like you, trust you, love you, and, and attach themselves to what you're doing. And one of those things, he calls it a creed. I call it a belief. It's the same thing. You know, what, what is, what is you, what do you believe that compels you to do what you do? And why does this matter to you? And most people make the mistake of just telling people what I do. Like, Hey, I'm going to help you grow your YouTube audience. Okay. Me and a bunch of other people <laughs> too, yeah. right? So that tells me what you do, but it doesn't start forming a human connection Really, like it's kind of like I understand it, but why you versus this other person, the other person, and the other person? And so, when it's what you do plus why you do it, which is I'm going to help you grow your YouTube audience so that, or because, or whatever, like now, like this is the what. Now you're saying this is the actual result, the actual reward, the actual thing. I believe so, um, so that you can reach people and change their lives. And that's the through line for me, the thread that ties every job I've ever done almost for my whole life together, everything I've invested time and money into kind of revolves around that. And YouTube just happens to be a great place, I think, to reach people and change lives. So, uh, yeah, having both the what and the why in it, the what tells people what you do and the why is what starts forming the human connection. So people who do share that belief with you are like, yes, that's why I want to work with Tim or that's why I want to work with Jessica versus someone else is because they get me. They understand me. They're trying to get to the same place. They have a similar goal or people who are blank slates who are like, oh, I never thought about why I'm doing this or why I believe like that's an opportunity for you to push your belief on them. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, for you, to, you know. for, for you to kind of help write their story a little bit in some way, maybe. Yeah. So do you have some tips that we could use to like if we're just sitting here and we're like well we know what we do but we don't know why we do it because sometimes we get into the what and we we don't even know the why right yeah do you have some tips on how to like drill down and figure out what your why is yeah the way i do it with clients because that's a very common question when i work with people they're like well i do gaming videos i'm like (laughs) okay there's lots of gamers out there why you? I don't know. Cause I am family friendly. Nope. Family friendly is a what? That's not a why. Right. Okay. Well, uh, because I'm funny. Nope. That's too subjective. I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> Tell me something else. Right. Uh, so, um, the, the, the way I think about it is like, what's, what's like the mission of your business or of your YouTube channel, your podcast or whatever you're working on. And one of the ways to kind of get there is to maybe is to kind of reverse engineer the process. And that's start at the end. Like what types of stories do you want to hear from people as a result of their interaction with you or your or your brand or your business? Do you want to hear stories of like, hey, thank you. Your content saved my life. I didn't commit suicide because of which is really heavy, I guess. But <laughs> which is a true <laughs> story, okay. actually. Yeah. But, you know, that, that that's why I came to mind that is a story from my audience, but, or do you want to hear like, "Ah, I am just an overworked, overwhelmed mom and your content helped me, um, find peace, you know, or find confidence or like, um, your content brought my family together or like whatever it is, like, what's the end thing that like the stories, like if I heard stories like this from my audience, Oh my gosh, this would be so worth it. Right. Yeah. And then just kind of, okay, well, maybe there's a belief in there. Maybe there's a value in there that you could like start digging into. And uh, it does take some probing, some digging, some gut check level stuff. And it means putting money, the money conversation on hold just for a little bit until you figure this out. Um, And like if 
all the things be considered equal, what would make me like, yes. Mm -hmm. And I think discovering that's really important because it comes out in your business. It comes out in your content. It comes out when you're serving your, your, your audience and your community and they can tell. And it's like something deeper inside of you. That's just like that intangible thing. Like, Oh, I love that person because I don't even know why I just love that person. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you maybe have thought about it and intentionally incorporating those things into your content, but they don't, you know, necessarily know unless you're stating it like I do, like all the time. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's only the 112th time I've heard you say <laughs> your intro. You know. but, Which means you watched about 50 videos because I say it twice in every video. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So speaking of videos, how do you work your, I mean, besides saying it, how do you work your value proposition kind of through your content and into your videos? Uh, everything I do comes back to that. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so when I, like when I open up my videos with my hook, for example, Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you, we're going to look at, um, how to do, how to do AB testing in your YouTube analytics. And so you can determine which series are reaching people and having the biggest impact. Right. Right. Then you go on. Now, you know why AB testing is important rather than just saying, Hey, we're going to talk about AB testing in analytics. People are like, you know, glaze (laughs) over, Anytime you like creative people, whenever you talk about Excel spreadsheets and data, they're like, oh, like just let me make something cool. Yes. <laughs> so, but, but you explain, this is what we're doing and this is how it helps us reach our goal of reaching people. And, you know, then people understand, like, okay, that's the what and the why again. I understand what we're doing and why it matters. Mm-hmm. I'm a little bit more intrigued now, even if it's about data and analytics <laughs> as to why this is important to me than I was before. Um, yeah. And, uh, so that'd be one example, but yeah, every, everything I do, like, Hey guys, we're gonna, today we're going to talk about how you can make more money this holiday season from your YouTube videos so that you can make your videos more sustainable long-term so you can serve your community better in the future. You know, again, so it's like money's not the goal. Money's the tool we use to reach and serve people. So, um, does that make sense? Yeah, that okay. makes total sense. I think where you, where I've heard you talk about it, that makes like the most sense on a scale other than business is your family's channel. I heard you say that you could have thousands more subscribers if you just went totally broad with it, but you focus, I can't remember what it was. First time moms or something in that. Yeah. Young moms. Yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. So on the family channel, um, you know, if you want to grow a big vlogging channel, you got to go after those young kids, like the young teenage girls, especially, but even boys, um, you know, if you're a Roman Atwood or something or, or the Jake Pauls or something yeah. like if you want a hundred million views a month and a vlogging channel and millions of subscribers, it's that young kid audience. But we don't have that and we're not targeting that audience. We, I think right now have about like 85,000 as of right now, mm-hmm. thousand subscribers. And it's doing like, what, a million views a month or something like that. So it's, it's not bad. But what we are more like, what's more important to us than views is reaching and serving the people that we care about. And for us, that's the young mom, one, maybe two kids. If they have two, like the oldest is three years old and, and younger. And she just feels like overwhelmed and it's like, she's like, I'm struggling with one or two kids here. How do they do it with six, almost seven, number yeah. seven here in a few weeks? All within like seven kids in eight years. Like, you know, we just boom, 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 boom. You guys are out. crazy. First great, of great. all. Yeah. It's yeah. awesome. <laughs> you know, I've learned this may be a different topic, but I've learned that whatever the hardest option is, is usually the option that brings the most reward. I can see that. So, can... uh, I'm not saying everyone, everyone has a different pain tolerance level, but, <laughs> you know, but uh, I think we've hit ours. I and mean, we know I know we've hit ours. Seven's not the last. Yeah. But <laughs> but they watch us, I hope. Be, and we try to tell stories. And I'm like, hey, we're the experts here. Let us show you how we go do how like my wife. Let me show you how I do a shopping trip alone with six little kids. You know, so she's not going to say point number one, point number two. Here's a slide presentation of how I do it. No, she's just going to do it as a story and just show like, OK, I'm giving the, my, my son the iPhone with the shopping list. My this daughter, like, you know, Hannah, can you push the shopping cart? And to, like she's giving everyone jobs and she just we try to tell it as a story, but it's not going to grow the biggest channel mm-hmm. that way. Um, you know, young, overwhelmed moms have like five minutes a day when they're on their toilet before their kid comes banging <laughs> totally. on the door going, mom, 
up. You're like, you know, they don't have long viewing sessions right. <laughs> like, like a teenager does. So it's just, but that's okay. Cause our goal is not to grow a big channel. We are more interested in serving people we care about than we are in being like the number one biggest YouTube vlogging family on YouTube. Yeah. So I think, I think the over encompassing like theory or like message here is to have a why on why you're doing everything and let it have the same commonality all the way through everything you do. And the other things are just tools like the money and the subscribers and all of that. They're just a tool to get you to that thing. So no matter what somebody's business is, they can use a value proposition, you know, to say, Hey, like I want to reach whatever so I can help them do whatever. Right. Like that should always be, the thought process behind it. So do you have any last tips when it comes to value propositions or other resources besides the primal branding book or whatever? Uh, there's a whole book oh, about well, called value proposition design. Right here. Look at that. I didn't oh. even plan it. It just happened to be right here. <laughs> value proposition design. And love then you flip it. the book over. It's called bad value proposition design. <laughs> And I love it because like, it's like all pictures and graphs and charts, like perfect for a creative type of person. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. I'm going to link the Primal Branding book and that book below so everybody can check those out if they want to. And if someone is wanting to find out more about Tim Smoyer, how do they do that? Um, they could go to youtube.com slash video creators. I'd love to have you guys join us over there. We talk more about this kind of stuff a lot and, uh, at Tim Schmoyer on Twitter or on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google play, Spotify, all the, all, all the, the things. things, all the places. Yeah. I was going to say all the things, but like all the places where you listen <laughs> to your, your, uh, your podcast is called video creators. You can find it there too. Awesome. Thank you so much for, redoing this recording with me too. <laughs> yeah, no problem. It's been fun. Thanks for having me.